Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. I've been admiring Coach Goose forehand for four or five years now. That's kind of scary. <laughs> That's really creepy of you. And it's really scary that when you crank your forehand up, no matter what position you're in, uh -huh. it's like, whoa, you know. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so Coach Goose forehand, when he cranks it up, is actually very, very intimidating. Um, I've spoken to all your high-performance kids, and a lot of them, like me, when you crank that up, mm -hmm. they don't know how to handle it. Like, it, it, it's like your first instinct in your head is, here it comes, and you want to swing as fast and as hard as you can at it, mm -hmm. and then... I would say nine times out of 10, you either frame it or catch it late or it, it goes haywire because ooh, it things coming. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so what is the secret of that shot? Like when you crank it up, what are you doing that um, makes it so fast, so penetrating, so um, intimidating? That's a good question. Um, I've never really thought about it myself either. Um, I think the biggest thing what I've realized when I'm hitting my forehands or just shots in general is just making sure I'm following through and then keeping whatever I can control in my own hands. Um, so, for example, like how I finish my shot, a lot of people tend to, for example, right, if a lot of people tend to, especially with their forehands, is to pull away. I really do the opposite. I try to keep my left shoulder pretty far out in front or just keep it there, even on contact. That's where the secret is, is because my whole core is fired out and I'm only focusing on where the ball is making contact. I don't even look at sometimes where I hit my ball. I hit, when I strike through sometimes, I just leave my head there and then I look up afterwards. So it's really about the combination of using your legs, and your core to really fire this ball, right? Um, what I also try to keep, right, is my left arm, like just out in front and onto the right hand side. So when I fire it, now I could really just keep my eyes on that ball, fire it far in front, and then let that swing go. So Gu, let's, let's try some with the short court. Yeah. And then you can talk us through it step by step. Okay, okay. sounds good. Coach Robin's a little cold. I'm freezing, Harry. Keep moving your feet. <laughs> and it's dark. <laughs> Ooh, I can't then, barely see. Then you better not miss, Harry, because then you're going <laughs> to get colder. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh, gosh. All right. Do you want that, pro? That will make you play in the dark, make you play in the freezing cold not let you give up on your tennis. Well, I got my coach, Rob. You can get your coach, Rob, at Play Your Court. You can find over 27,000 players out there, coaches and playing partners, all at playyourcourt.com. So you'll see what I focus on is using my legs and getting this ball in front. So when I get to this ball, the first thing I do is prep early. You see how already I'm prepping my racket early? And that's giving me the key factor. Uh, that's why a lot of coaches, even players, myself, try to remind, each, like, remind students, clients, and even ourselves, right? If we prep early, it's a lot easier for us to really attack this ball. Right, when that ball comes, this part it should be already back and this should be tracking. Right, so when we get there, when we can get our feet there and set our feet, then we can really drive with our lower body, basically our core through our lower legs. You'll see the whole time, I'm not really using my arms as much, right? I'm actually keeping it probably, I would say a good 60 to 70% of my swing. I'm not swinging as fast as I can. I'm not maximizing 100% of my swing. That's actually the worst thing possible. You actually want to be around 65 to 75% of 
on your swing speed because that's how you're going to stay relaxed and that's how you're probably going to get some more coverage and power through that ball because literally all the all the forehands i've hit is pretty leg dominant and core dominant so let's try this where i'm going to use my uh, harry's going to just toss me balls randomly um but we're I, all I'm going to do is just focus on just keeping it, my arms really loose. I'm looking at, looking at 65 to 75% swing speed and really trusting my legs and my core to fire my shots through. And also just making sure my head is out in front. You'll see some of the forehands I hit, I keep my head in front. Oi. So you can tell like my upper body is pretty calm. Go for it, right? My upper body is pretty calm, but my legs and my core are really working together as a unit. My arms are pretty relaxed. So therefore, when I can generate, let me see if you can generate with a little more pop here. I'm actually using my core and my legs to really drive this ball. You'll see my swing speed gets a little quicker, but I'm not, you can tell I'm not giving it the death grip. That's the one issue that I see a lot of players doing is when they're trying to swing harder, their grips get tighter. So you want to keep that 65 to 75% swing speed so your grip doesn't tighten up as much as you want to. The one, the one thing that I've noticed with your swing in particular is I call it getting it in cue. Like you you get it here and then you actually hold right about here. Yeah. And then and then it's it's like a big drive through the legs, the the core, and then finally the shoulders through like this. But it, it's it's tough to be in this position and then like basically drive it through like this with the amount of pace that you give. How do you do that? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just practice. <laughs> I mean, in Q is a very complicated thing. It's a very time-based thing. Um, I think it's just we can do so much with it. Um, I think it's just there's so, certain drills like the handball feeds that we do. There's like the Andrew, uh, Andy Rublev drill. I mean, sorry, the Rublev drill that he does is just dropping and hitting. And those are just working on your Q. So slowly and surely when you start building kind of pace to it, right? It's kind of like baseball, right? When you swing, you don't pull. You basically keep your eye on contact even when you swing. Mm -hmm. Same thing as golf, right? Same thing as all other sports. Your eyes are still literally on contact. The cue part will just be a little more timing based. You'll start to realize your shot. It's a process you have to learn over time, right? It's not an overnight thing that all of a sudden I know it's a year of development and just trusting your forehand. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, most people, um, myself included, we when we try to crank up the power, we jolt. Yeah. Well, we, jolt. we lose the power <laughs> yeah. because we think that it's all arm based. Like you're going to, you know, like this and that's going to give you the power. You lose the power from the shoulder opening the core turning and then your racket coming in last and then coming around so what coach goo does very well is that he everything kind of is in sync with the racket connecting with the ball and all of the weight transferred there you know and that's that's the eyes the chin and everything just looking here and not there yeah, right. I think that's the biggest point. And to add on to that, it's also not only my hand-eye coordination, it's also the legs as well, right? It ha when you start with a, like a nice solid base, right? You want to make sure, see how like if I really drove this one and then drive this ball all the way through, my head and my, like, yes, my head and my, my racket is going to be in cue of the, on this ball, but you'll notice when I really bring this around, I'm really focused on my body shifting. My, that means my legs through my lower, to my hips, to my core, I'll be really focusing on driving it through. And the biggest problem, like the biggest issue that I see a lot 
with players, especially from U2, is just pulling, but also when they're, especially when the ball's coming quick, they like to grip harder. So when they swing, instead of you trusting their, their leg base, it's all upper body. So when you swing, it looks like that, and then therefore they're gonna get, get caught late. So that's why I always try to use the method of like kind of pushing something heavy, like pushing a fridge, for example, right? That's one of the uh, terms I use for my kids is when they're playing, right? And so they're meeting something like fast, right? It's like, if I want to shift or push this ball back the same way it's coming back, I'm not gonna use only my arms. I'm gonna use my whole body to shift that way forward, right? When you push a fridge, right, for example, you don't push it with your hands. You actually use your whole body to push the fridge, right? That's what the concept I try to teach most of my kids or most of my players that are trying to figure out their forehands how to generate e more easier and effortless kind of power is kind of that method I teach. All right, coach, let's teach me how to push the fridge. Okay. Well, we're going to think about it, right? When we push the fridge, what are the th few things that you do? So see how that weight transfers forward, right? So that back leg will go, right? It will kind of shift over and go forward. So I'm going to toss these balls a little quicker. What I want you to do is make sure, right, your, your head's still and you're just using your body weight, so using your legs especially and your core to really hit the shot. So keep your hands relaxed as much as you possibly can. All right, here we go. It's okay. Try to get that leg transferred forward. Oh, that almost hit my head. All right, here we go. There you go. Good, that's it. Keep that head still by all. Just don't look at where you're hitting it. Just look at that ball contact and where you're going. Sorry, here we go. Good, just relax, let the rela hands relax and just trust that swing, good. Trust that swing, that's it. Take it right back, swing. Good, there you go, just let it go, let it go. Let your body do the work, don't let your hands just do the work. Good, a few more there, that's a solid one. Good, stay down low in that left knee for me, there you go, two more. One more ready, tough one, good. So you can tell there, right, the biggest thing that he did to adjust near the end was his weight was going forward. I was tossing the ball a little lower, but quicker to him. So when he, when he had no choice, right, he kind of simplified his take back. It made his cue more in sync. And now he had to move forward because he couldn't move back anymore. So I'm forcing him to meet the ball in front. Good. Well, I you guess tired? I'll, need, I'll need more practice. Yeah, but how does that feel to you? What, what do you feel? What did you feel? That was easy. Yeah. That was the one thing I felt is that it it made it easy and me not to think about oh I gotta crank this up you know mm -hmm. so um, just getting the feet in play yep. getting turned yep getting the shoulder rotated so that my core can get around yeah all made the shot a lot easier. Yeah, so what, what I try to break it down to is your your hand and eye coordination will come along. That would always come along because naturally your body will figure it out, right? Like yes, the technique we have to teach, but it's just the process of trusting that, right? right. And then when it comes to, and what we as coaches or for m myself, what I pride for is just making sure that our kids understand that you have to use your legs to get to position, right? And your lower body and your core, right? We don't, I feel like we don't do enough or remind them enough about footwork. But when you tell, right, the difference when you're using your legs, you're using your lower, like your lower body plus your core, it really gives you that extra effortless power, totally. right? And stability, right? But you're not, you might be tired in the, in the first, like maybe month or so because you're, you're not used to it. When you build that confidence and you build that technique of the footwork, right, with the footwork as well, you're going to feel like, okay, I've done the work. I can really trust it. And you start slowly believing into it, right? And then that's how I naturally got into, like, the forehand I want now, or I have, um, is because just due to the fact of that, right? It's just buying into the fact that, like, okay, put, I put so much work into this. It might, there's some days I might be off, but it's going to come through. So what Coach Gu is saying, you got to trust it if you're going to put in all this work. Yes. <laughs> There's going to be terrible days where you're not going to make this a single forehand. 
That's any given player. Even the best players do it. But the biggest thing is just when you know what you have to do is double down on what you believe, believe right? right? So it means if you, if you know your feet is not in position, then you double down on that, right? If you know that your swing is going to be a little late, just double down and gain your feet and just swing a bit earlier. Just keeping everything the same way, just adjusting minor things, never major. A lot of what Coach Gu is saying is actually a lot of basics. Yeah, it is that, very basic. That we all forget. Yeah. So it's it's normal because when we, especially if, we, if something's going wrong, right, what's our first instinct to do? Swing harder. Swing, swing harder. Faster. Yeah, but what's the ver- well? You overthink it. Right, right, right. right. That's what you start doing. You start overthinking it. Maybe some players don't. A majority of players I've talked to do overthink it because they're like, okay, maybe I'm timing this super late, so I'm gonna swing super early and just see how it goes, mm-hmm. and it goes haywire, right? right. It, the biggest thing is like, okay, if I know he's gonna rip the crap out of this ball, I'm making the adjustment with what I've what I've done before, and then just timing it a little bit towards or timing it a little earlier or a little bit later if I'm hitting it early. Got it. Well, thank you, Coach Gu, for showing us the way. Of course. Um, like I said, you when you crank your forehand, I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> and I'm sure the kids go, uh-oh, too. So no, thank you gosh. for showing us how to do that. No, of course, of course, anytime. All right, so where can we find you, Gu? You can find me at agu.tennis. I'll also be posting content there as well. All right, guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.